the biggest threat to your private equity firm or portfolio company is not underperforming professionals. When most business leaders look at their team, they immediately look for the underperformers, the weakest members of the business. And rightly so. If we look at a scale of underperformance, below average, above average, and high performance, naturally we gravitate to how do we get rid of underperformance within a business. Now, focusing on that is an okay train of thought. But what I've found is that most private equity firms, and certainly most private equity backed companies, don't want to be good, don't want to be average, they want to be great. Now, certainly for a private equity backed company perspective, okay is not going to get great returns not for the C-suite professionals with equity positions, not for the private equity professionals with carry positions, and certainly not for the investors' returns, which is an okay train of thought on focusing on underperformers. But certainly in my experience, most private equity firms don't want to be average or okay, they want to be great. And certainly private equity back companies don't want to be average or okay, they want to be great. Because obviously that's leveraged on C-suite professionals getting their equity returns, private equity professionals getting their carry returns, and of course, LPs and investors getting their returns on their investment, which of course then leads into the next raise of the next fund. So what are the real threats to private equity firms and their investments? The answer is the average people in those businesses. Working in the executive search world, over the last decade, I've interviewed thousands of candidates, none of which have ever described themselves as average or okay. All of them, or at least the majority of them, would describe themselves as high-performing individuals, especially as we're interviewing people at C-suite level, we're interviewing people that go into private equity firms as investment professionals or back office team. People regard themselves as good at what they do, great at what they do, and high performers. Why would you describe yourself as anything else? But clearly, that can't be the case. Thousands of candidates that I've interviewed across that time have not all been high performers. A small minority of those individuals have been high performers. So what's the solution? Do we just look at our private equity firms? Do we look at our portfolio companies and just sack 80% of the staff and remove them and just replace them all with high performers? Of course, running an executive search firm I would, of course, therefore, or you would expect for me to say, yes, that's exactly what you should do. That's exactly what you shouldn't do. And that's not the course of action that I'm recommending it. My point here is that if you are running a private equity firm, have a portfolio company, and those leaders of those businesses, or as you as a leader of that business, are an effective leader, you've got the right skill set, right experience, right credentials, and right mindset to be able to lead and drive an organization and focus on growth, either of the PE firm or the portfolio company, then I'm going to guess that you're probably already getting rid of your underperformance in your business. You're already considering that and making those changes. But my question is, what are you doing with the below average and above average? They tend to sit in a business, it's not enough to make them out because there's too much hassle, but it's also they're not really getting the job done as well as you possibly could do, or you're having to hire an extra person around them to therefore support their underperformance or their below average or above average performance. The way that I see people development as a manager is that people sit within three camps. To make it really clean and simple for your mid-management, your senior management team to be able to look at people and process to support and development of these individuals. These three modes are pressure, support and stretch. Those that are in your average camps, hopefully you're exiting your underperformers, but those that are in your average camps are in your pressure and support mode, and those that are in your high performance camps are in your stretch mode. Now for pressure, it's likely that you've got somebody that is not achieving their key performance indicators. You've laid them out for them very clearly, and they're obviously becoming below what you're setting standards of them. Now these people, in simplistic terms, need pressure to be able to hit and ensure that they're hitting those numbers. With support mode, it's likely this person has just started hitting their numbers or is getting close to hitting what you're expecting for them to achieve. It's likely that having been in the pressure mode, they're now moving into the support mode and their KPI numbers are starting to get somewhere where you'd like. For these people, they need support. They need an arm around, they need guidance, they need telling them they're doing a good job, that they're making the right next steps and they're making progress. 
If you're familiar with Ken Blanchard's work, this sits within the situational leadership model. So you've got basically somebody's progressing from S1, which is you need to do this as a KPI's pressure mode, to S2, S3, where you're still telling them that you're offering support, guidance, maybe not guidance, you're offering like that kind of support and that comfort level of reassurance of you're doing a good job, this is great, making good progress here, but obviously making that in a radically candid fashion. And finally, stretch mode. One of the biggest issues that I have and I find within businesses is that we, certainly myself, we spend too much time looking at underperformance and below average and above average type performance and trying to get those people into high performance that we neglect the opportunity that we have to develop the high performance within the business. And then we get surprised when they come to us wanting better challenges, better opportunities, or even potentially handing their notice in. As a rule, I would suggest businesses spend more time with their high performers, developing and stretching and moving them forward. And that's what this mode is about. In fact, there isn't a single great person, a single high performer that I've interviewed at private equity, investment professional, back office team, or portfolio executive level that doesn't like to be challenged, that doesn't like to be pushed, that doesn't want something more from their just a pay packet and growing the business. They want to be pushed outside their comfort zone. They want to have challenges, want to have opportunities that stretch them. And that's where this is. Looking as a manager and leader and identifying the areas that you need to stretch those individuals, whether it's a C-suite executive in your portfolio company, how do you get that individual to think a little bit more of how do they grow further? How can you offer support and guidance? How can you find external coaches, mentors, et cetera, in order to support their development and stretch them even further? You're doing X, Y, Z in revenue at the moment. This is the industry average. How can we really push above that? How can we really change it? What would it have to look like? Sometimes it's just asking them questions. You don't need to go to them with answers. You just need to go to them with questions of how they could increase, improve, and develop their performance, areas they may not have looked at. And we've all got blind spots, we've all got weaknesses, we've all got areas we're not, we're not strong in. So it's being able to question that um, with these high performers to stretch them even further. Of course, this is all easy said, but in true fashion, it's not as simple implementing into an organization and driving into private equity firms or to portfolio companies. We take one thing away from this, it's identifying if you are a fast growing firm, if you are a growth firm, if you are looking at growing your private equity business and you're actioning that, you're looking at growing obviously your portfolio companies and clearly will be actioning that, is that maybe taking that consideration, A, aware from underperformers, because it's likely you're probably already exiting those people that don't fit, and maybe bringing some level of consideration to below and above average performance. But putting a serious amount of consideration is in, in how you stretch your mid managers, your senior management team, et cetera, to go to the next level. Of course, ensuring that you have the right bench strength is in simplistic basis. If you have C-suite executives you're not happy with, if you have private equity professional needs, replacement needs, growth needs, then please do reach out to us and we'll select you. We're absolutely happy to help you with securing those individuals, be that across Europe or North America. We specialize in these positions. We don't work with firms outside of private equity and we know what A players look like. An A player in a publicly traded company, yes, may be able to make it in private equity and there's clear examples of that in the industry, but it's one in 50, one in 100, rather than if you've got a proven private equity executive who's been there, done that, knows the industry, knows the market, understands the space, understands the product, service, etc. then you're looking at a surefire home hit to be able to take that business to an even better exit. That's the kind of people that we secure for our clients and work with across Europe and North America. But before you do that, take the time to review within your private equity firm and your portfolio companies, who sits in what camp. Your underperformers are already moving out you're below and above average, do they need pressure? Do they need support? And of course, your high performers, what level of stretching and how can you push them into being even better executives, even better investment professionals, even better IR professionals, even better deal origination professionals, CFOs, COOs in your private equity firms, et cetera. And review those individuals and then take corrective action and create plans to develop them.